Hey everyone, here's the uh, video for adding and subtracting rational expressions with unlike denominators. Maybe one of the more challenging things that we do all year long. So uh, let's jump in and uh, see how we do it. I'm going to do two. I'm going to ask you to do two. And that's going to be it. And then you'll practice a bunch of problems. So, um, so I can add and subtract algebraic fractions is our um, I can statement. Obviously, we're going into the unlike denominators. And we know when we add you know, fractions that are unlike denominators, we have to get the denominator to be the same. And that's what makes this lesson a little challenging. So uh, we'll start with this one here. So when you look at this here, uh, to be able to add these two fractions together, all right, we have to make the denominators the same. All right. So how do we do that? Well, uh, number one is we need to... Um, you know, we need to we need to factor them. And uh, sometimes the problems are more complicated than this. But for this one here, we just we're going to just do the greatest common factor for both of them. So when you look at the denominators, there are 3x cubed and 6x. What do they currently have in common? All right. And you can see they both have a 3 and an x in common. So I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit. I'm going to rewrite it as 5 over, I'm going to pull a 3x out of this one. And I'm going to write that as an x squared there. That would be equivalent to the first part. And then I'm going to put my plus, and then I'm going to put seven, and I'm going to pull out my three X, and I would have a two still, right? So I just kind of rewrote those with the greatest common factor. So the question you have to ask yourself is, what is, does each, do we need to add or multiply each of the denominators by uh, to get the denominators to be the same? So if you look at it, they both have a three X in common now, they're both, one of them's missing an x squared, the other one's missing a 2. So we have to multiply that in to each of the missing denominators. So what we're going to do is let's go to the first one here, and we're going to multiply this first one by 2. Now, if you do a 2 in the denominator, you have to do a 2 in the numerator. Can't, can't not do that, all right? Because really, we're just multiplying by 1 over 1, which doesn't change it at all. If we just multiplied that by 2, it would be changing uh, that fraction right there. All right. Now, what is the, the, the second denominator missing that the first one has? It, it's missing that x squared. So we're going to multiply this guy by x squared. And we're going to come over here and we're going to multiply that one by x squared. Because again, x squared over x squared is just one. All right. So this is good. I like what I see here. Now, our denominators are technically the same. So we can just add the numerators across. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so it, it would be the 7x squared. I'm going to write that part first. All right. So 7x squared. And then it's going to be plus. 5 times 2 is 10. So there's your numerator. We can't do anything else with that. That's it. And then let's go all over. Now, I'm just going to put everything back together. I could write it as 3x times 2 times x squared, but I think we might as well, you know, put that together. So let's multiply the numbers together. 3 times 2 would be 6. And then how many x's do you guys see there? It looks like we have x squared and an x. That would be x to the third. That is our final answer right there. All right. Um, let's try another one. So you might want to rewatch that video there. Um, so this one here, this is kind of, a, this is actually a pretty challenging problem. This one says 2x uh, squared, and then there's a minus sign. I think this minus sign should maybe be down just a little bit. Right there, right there. Let's go back right there. Um, but we're subtracting them this time. Well, that makes it interesting, doesn't it? Um, let's go ahead and just rewrite that and make it an addition symbol. So I'm just going to rewrite it. So I'm going to go 2x squared. Uh, over x plus 1. I'm going to change it to an addition symbol. Now, if I change that to an addition symbol, essentially I'm taking this negative and I'm distributing it to the two things in the numerator. And you don't have to do it to the denominator. You just do it to the numerator. All right. So we would get um, negative x and then we would have plus 1. All right. All over our x right there. All right. So that's looking pretty good. Now what we need to do is... Um, we need to um, we need to get the denominators to be the same. Now, this one, if you look at it, lots of people, what they would say for this one, huge mistake people make is they decide that they're going to add a one right here, all right? Because they're like, oh, we're just missing a plus one. You can't do that. You have to use multiplication for this, all right? So I'm just going to get rid of that guy right there. So what you need to do is you need to think of x plus one as a term and x as a term. So we're going to multiply the second one by x plus one. And we're going to multiply, and we got to do that in the numerator as well. So x plus 1. All right. And we need to multiply this bottom one just by x. And we're going to go x over x right there. All right. Let's go ahead and rewrite some stuff because it's looking a little crazy right now. But hopefully you notice the denominators are the same. All right. So in the first numerator here, we have 2x cubed. 
And then in the second one here, I'm going to think of this as, um, I do have to put that part in parentheses right there. Uh, I'm going to use the FOIL method real quick. It looks like we get a negative x squared minus x plus 1x, so minus 1x plus 1x, and then we get plus 1. All right, and let's just see, did I do all that right? Looks good to me. All right, and then that's going to be all over our, if I just distributed the x through, I'd get x squared plus x. All right. Um, let's just simplify the numerator a little bit. So it looks like uh, the negative 1x and the 1x would cancel off. So we would get 2x cubed minus x squared plus 1 all over x squared plus x. And that is going to be our final answer right there. I, mean, I told you these problems are a little challenging. All right. Uh, but that's it. That's our answer right there. All right. I have two more for you guys to try. Um, I want you to give them a shot, see how they go. A um, couple things here. I would make this negative right here. I'm just going to cross that negative off right there. Uh, this guy should be shifted over a little bit. That must have transferred a little weird. Uh, again, this negative I'd bring down here, and I would just make this like, a, like that there. All right. So I want you guys to try those two for me. So try them. See what you end up with. Pause the video here. Um, I anticipate you guys are going to have some questions on this lesson. So please come and ask me. Uh, like I said, I'm really excited to help. So pause the video, try these two problems, see what you guys get. All right, those are your answers there. All right. Um, when you look at your answers, obviously you can see in the first one, they showed you the numerator. And here's your denominator. I guess if you wanted to multiply the denominator back together, you could and get a trinomial. And then in the second one, Here's your numerator, and here's your denominator. Okay, so let's talk. If you have questions, we should probably talk about some of these. I'd love to help you guys with some more problems from your practice. Um, I think that's the best way for me to, to go over this without making this video too crazy and too long. So thanks for watching, and um, good luck.